This guy looks like it might want to sacrifice. Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and everybody. We're just sitting around talking about giant robots with walking canes from the future here to save <laughs> Linux gaming. It's weird, weird story. Go back and listen to that. Or you know what? Show up live next week and we'll tell you all about it. But if you're a patron, you get that in uh, the um, live and uncut versions of the show. What's up? What's new? Jill, you finally uh, got to go to Disneyland for the first time ever. Uh, first time ever. First time. No, it just, How did you it like just it? Been... Oh, it just, I go every month, sometimes every two weeks. <laughs> but yeah, it was a much needed break because my Steve husband has been working so many hours, anywhere between 65 and 72 hours. <laughs> so I haven't seen him a lot. And so we had a lot of fun there and had some good food and went on one of our favorite rides. And one of the cool things is this weekend, we, we were supposed to go last weekend, but this weekend... Uh, we're going to go to the original Renaissance Pleasure Fair here in Southern California. And my Steve husband is going to wear something very unique that we will post in our LGC Discord chat. So make sure to... Sonic the Hedgehog onesie. <laughs> no. <laughs> Traditional medieval Sonic the Hedgehog onesie. Yeah. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> so <laughs> I can't wait to be saying that a lot this weekend, especially to the queen when she comes by. In the parade. <laughs> and then we had a fun Trackmania practice maps on yesterday's stream. I really like those. They were like a roller coaster ride. Let's go ahead and jump into it this week. We got a new version of Ubuntu. Is it out yet? Is it coming out? Is it uh, yes. way down the road? Did it happen <laughs> last week? I don't know. I don't keep track of Ubuntu's anymore. It's just it's every time I turn around, it seems like, hey, there's a new version of Ubuntu out. Yeah. So I'm really excited about this. This one's special. Um, it's, it's the highly anticipated Ubuntu Linux 24.04 long-term support edition, and it's scheduled to release tomorrow, Thursday, April 25th, 2024. And, uh, but that, that could possibly change, but, uh, honestly, uh, uh, Canonical is actually, and Ubuntu is, are good on their dates usually with the, the timing of releases. So um, this one is actually Ubuntu 24.04 Noble Numbat. And being an LTS release, it will receive five years of bug fixes and security updates. And if you have an Ubuntu Pro subscription, it adds an extra seven years of support for up to 12 years <laughs> of updates and uh, bug fixes. And that is just amazing. And um, it's actually powered by Linux kernel 6.8 and the GNOME 46 desktop, just like the latest Fedora 40 release that came out yesterday that we'll be talking about at the end of the show. And honestly, yesterday I tested out the Ubuntu 24.04 beta, and like Ubuntu 23.10, I was impressed with how slick and fast GNOME was running. On Ubuntu 23.10, it was using GNOME 45. But this was GNOME 46, and I think it was that that much even quicker on the same machine. I installed it on the same machine as uh, one of the machines I installed 23.10 on. And in fact, uh, tomorrow when the stable release comes out, I will be upgrading the machine, um, my podcasting rig here, to uh, 24.04. So Ubuntu, you know, has always had one of the easiest and streamlined installers and this release it is even better i mean no one can deny the power of the ubuntu installer it's one of the reasons why the distro became so popular because it was so easy to install everything out of the box what's really cool though is there there's actually an accessibility page now in the installer so you can customize ubuntu for your needs right at the start and uh, that's just wonderful because uh, Ubuntu and the GNOME Foundation have been working heavily, much, much more on accessibility, which we, we highly need on Linux. And the software center is actually great, greatly improved. It's much faster. It's easier to use and much more organized. It just looks altogether just much cleaner. 
and it's very similar to the Ubuntu 23.10 uh, software center. But they, they did move a few things around, I think, were, uh, that was improved. And something that I actually love dearly about Pop! OS has come to Ubuntu. So Ubuntu 24.04 has a dedicated firmware updater now. Yay! <laughs> I just love that about Pop. So I was so happy that was, that came to uh, uh, our default Ubuntu. And what's cool is the 24.04 beta actually automatically found an update from my Logitech Unified USB dongler for my mouse and keyboard that I was using. And that was quite sweet. It was it was really nice to see that because I'm usually I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not in Pop OS right now. I'm on Ubuntu and it's it it's letting me know there's an update. So that's cool. And actually one of my favorite features of this release are the beautiful noble numbat wallpapers, especially the pink ones. Both the one that is more graphical with a pink background and the one that is uh, drawn more photo reel. I, I love both those uh, wallpapers. I will be using those for quite some time. And uh, for those of you that don't know, the numbat is actually a cute extinct mar marsupial from Australia. So I thought it was cool that they were using that animal for this release. Is that this guy? No, no, that's not that guy. <laughs> I was like, th this guy looks like it might want to sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, it's not that one. <laughs> it's in Ubuntu. If you're still rocking in Ubuntu, good on you. If you like it, um, I'm trying to remember the last time I used Ubuntu. I think I tried yeah, like one of their while. live CDs to yeah. uh, pull up just like a graphical desktop to get to like GNOME disk or something like that. But I mean, hey, it works. Give it a try, then go install Debian. Because you knew I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Vola. We've been no. promised for years and years. Things we've been talking about on the show is the non-ending quest for a Linux tablet. Just a Linux tablet. That seems like such an easy ask, and everybody's taking a shot at it. They have. Vola's going to be the latest company taking a crack to make this elusive beast. This one's going to have a 12.3 inch quad HD display, MediaTek G99, 12 gigajoules of memory RAM, and 256 gigs of internal storage. All right. And apparently, Vola's already made some smartphones, so they're not completely new to this hardware thing. Out of the box, this is going to be shipping with Vola OS 13 Android, but it's capable, speaking of Ubuntu, running of the Ubuntu Touch. Now, yeah. It does lack cellular support for data in the united states they're just working on getting that improved and i was looking at it, this I'm like all right this looks pretty cool i bet it's going to be about 500 bucks come on all right it's not bad looking it's a new yes. product but when you're talking about it's 563 bucks which is 60 dollars more than a samsung galaxy s9 it's Google free, which means uh, a lot of stuff's not going to work. Lightweight design, advanced security. Uh, this isn't what I want. I don't think this is what I want. I don't think this is what a lot of people mm -hmm. out there want. They, we want something similar to a Raspberry Pi, don't we? Yeah. Something really that do. just, it's kind of a blank slate. Something like the Pine tab, but with power. Yeah. With a good screen <laughs> on it and a lot of memory and a good camera and battery life. And I don't know if this is necessarily Margaret. I think the, the whole Linux angle is more of a afterthought. I think what Joe's saying is right. This is more focused at the uh, privacy focused crowd that doesn't, you know, the, people who don't understand how to install like CX Droid or Lineage OS on their Android device. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think, Joe? You any thoughts on this? I mean, it's not bad well, looking, but that like five hundred bucks, you're paying a premium for something. Yeah, you definitely are. Uh, but the, actually, the Vola phones are are loved by the Linux community. I know quite a few people with the Vola phones running uh, Ubuntu Touch who really love them. So I think they would be willing to go out and buy one of the new Vola tablets. And honestly, it does look very beautifully built. 
And I think running Ubuntu Touch on it with an external keyboard and mouse could turn, you know, this this powerhouse of a tablet into a very nicely priced hybrid laptop. Hybrid laptops are five hundred to six hundred dollar range. So so maybe that's where they're trying to <laughs> get in the market. <laughs> I think I'm like the hybrid laptops is they already come with a keyboard. Yeah, they <laughs> they do. If this one if this one, you know, came with a keyboard, they would automatically be turned into a hybrid laptop. <laughs> it does have an SD card, though. Yes, yes, it does. Which is good. I mean, I wouldn't mind something like that. I, I want to see something like this in, you know, I don't want a junky tablet. I'm not, I'm not going to call like a low-cost, cost-reduced tablet. You know, like the, the Pine tab, like that was more of a play-around device. I yeah. want something more in like that three. 50 range because yeah that's but, that would be perfect when i talk about me as soon as you start getting to half a grand for a tablet my expectations jump higher than what this is delivering mm. because those tablets already exist now i'm not saying like but like i said if that premium thing there is like the privacy that's what you're worried about and eh, maybe go check it out there'll be a link to everything in the show notes but i thought we'd give it a mention anyway like just in case like yeah. hey man like, this is my thing. This is what I'm waiting on. For me, this is another miss for the Linux tablet that I'm still waiting for. Yeah. You know, I, I want that I understand. blank yeah. slate device where I can just put, you know, have that smorgasbord of Linux distributions and whatever I want to run on it. And uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to do it for me. However. Yeah, I think it might work for other people, though. Tell me about the new version of Fedorf. Version yeah. four zero. It yeah, seems like it's just yesterday. I was downloading and installing Core One. So yes, if you would like to play around with the default GNOME forty six desktop and not the Ubuntu uh, themed one, then take the latest Fedora Workstation forty for spin. That was actually released on Tuesday, yesterday. So GNOME forty six actually includes. A much improved focus on accessibility, like I was talking about earlier, upgrades to the files app, more refinement of the settings app and other core apps. And one of the cool new things about the software app is that the FlatHub apps are displayed with their verified badges. This, this is something me and Ven have been talking about. The software centers need to have the verified uh, software on there. Don't wait. <laughs> The canonical, they said they're really going to think about it this time. Yeah. <laughs> well, GNOME did it <laughs> with their software app. And the other cool thing is that the Files app has a new global search feature, which lets you search files from any location you desire, which is really cool. That's, that's a much needed feature in Files, otherwise known as Nautilus. And, you know, great work also to the Fedora team for another beautiful default desktop wallpaper. It's actually a cool, loosely painted bluish green forest. But when you use it in dark mode, it has the glow of fireflies in it. Really cool. I thought that was so they added an extra touch there. And their wallpapers have always been beautiful. And so I was happy about that. But it, it, was, it was really nice just running GNOME 46 vanilla. Yeah, you know, the, the default GNOME. Although I love Ubuntu's as well. It's awesome too. <laughs> I think the big story is that we found the one person on this entire planet who enjoys using uh, stock GNOME. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I don't mind. I've gotten used to it. Although, of course, I install tons of extensions anyways, like Dash to Dock and Dash to Panel. <laughs> the, those get installed first thing, gen generally, because I like my panel always showing <laughs> ladies and gentlemen before we get out of here i want to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart <laughs> yes email and Yay. a program that uses email and makes email possible and has on linux for a long long time is thunderburb and they're bringing rust to the party bringing rust to the party because it's a little crab i didn't even realize <laughs> rust so had a mascot that's horrifying yeah. but i bet it's delicious Adventures in Rust. They get a little thing on the yeah. blog over at Thunderbird. So if you work at, you know, a company, uh, your work email is probably powered by Exchange. And 
using Exchange and Thunderbird has always required the use of a paid third-party plugin. Since forever, this is just reality. Or I guess I should say, at least it did. Because uh, starting with the next ESR, that's the extended support release, you know, same way as with uh, Firefox. This July, Exchange support's going to be baked in. How yeah. wild is that? You know, but I should point out at least the email bits. At the email bits are going to be baked in because the calendar and address support, that's not going to show up until a later date to be determined. And uh, really, the only thing about this, like, you know, I think I want to talk about Russell. <clears throat> I've heard about Russell many times. Uh, they're going to be using EWS. For those of you familiar with Exchange, you're like, wait, wait, I thought that was getting uh, deprecated because it is. In 2026, uh, the new API is called Graph. And you, know, you can kind of expect this to hopefully work for about two years. And But the Thunderbird team was always like, I should say Thunderbird team, they're like, we're going to go that direction. This is just something we wanted to get up and working right now. Now, this is a big thing. I am. I think it was called Owl was the uh, Thunderbird program. Mm -hmm. uh, not yeah, the plugin that allowed um, yeah exchange access. Exchange. And I, I didn't. I don't remember what the pricing was for that. I don't know how that's going to play out. I, I you know they got Sherlocked with that one, but uh, he could you know I, I want to applaud effort. You know I know people are going to be like, well that took forever. I'm like, well at least they did it. I get around to it. Um, I'm using Evolution now, but hey, if you're using Thunderbird, you'll soon be able to join the party and exchange uh, emails with work. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Well, I I think uh, that Thunderbird having all the Microsoft Exchange support natively is honestly huge, and will help greatly increase its adoption outside of the Linux circle because. Because a lot of us Linux users forget, yeah, Thunderbird's available on Windows and Mac OS. So, and and Windows is, of course, a huge market. <laughs> so this this is really nice to have an alternative uh, to using Microsoft Exchange, which is not my favorite set of tools. <laughs> so I'm happy I can I can suggest now people use Thunderbird for that, just like I suggest uh, using the Firefox web browser for an open source experience. <laughs> and, you know, one of the many benefits of Thunderbird using the Rust programming language is that it will make it easier for their small team to reuse their work for the likes of Thunderbird for Android, otherwise known as K9 Mail, that we love and we've talked about here on the show. Also, this helps the team go through the old infrastructure of code and years of buildup on the existing code base and reconsider using a language in an active community like Rust. And Firefox already has Rust support built in, and Thunderbird is built on top of Firefox code. So this makes sense that they're they're moving to you know a Rust-based system. It makes life easier for them. If it works, it works. You know, yeah. <laughs> I always get a shout out. I always get nothing but applause for anybody. Uh, our, our small, dwindling, dying community of desktop email clients yeah. and people who use them as one of those um, people that rely on that. Uh, it's good. I have uh, nothing but, you know, I, I kind of bounced off Thunderbird when they changed that UI. I tried it. I tried it. I tried it hard because, you know, something yeah. you never want to do is have to switch email <laughs> clients. I know. Like, it's never fun. That was not one of those. That was like, I'm going to make me love you. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I tried for a couple of weeks, man. I was going to handle it. But I love Aww. progress like this. And, you know, me somebody, too. Yeah. somebody knew, saw that, you know, somebody saw that UI for the first time. They're like, this is it. I'm going to jam with it. You got to be able to keep both those thoughts and your brain meets at the same time. So it's a good thing playing around with Rust. There's nothing wrong with Rust at all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, good, yeah. And as Katana brought up, yeah, maybe multi factor authentication. That's mm. another thing. It might be an issue with That's teams. A good idea. Who knows? Yeah. Let them get, let them roll it out. Let them play with it. And this is, uh, yeah, yes. You know, you're not wrong when you say about time, but they're doing it. And that's the important thing. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy times. If you get any thoughts, since allegations, let us know. Drop us a comment on the YouTube video and, uh, or Odyssey. I check that like once every three or four months. And uh, if you like what we do, we do this live every 
Wednesday. Mm-hmm. We try to get in and out about 30 minutes. If you want the complete yeah. uncut version of the show, sometimes it gets edited down a little bit for time, but we try to keep the important bits in. But if you're like, hey, I want to relive that live experience, you can become one of our beautiful party patrons, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Everything we get goes back into the show. We're trying to make things fun. We don't track you. We host our own podcast, which is extraordinarily mm-hmm. rare no tracking all that fun <laughs> stuff speaking of like paranoia like dude i have to divide bandwidth to figure out how many people download our shows that's the only data i have uh we have again patreon it gets you live and uncut versions of the show we get libra pay paypal bitcoin wish list let's see what jill's got on our wish list over at the old amazon <laughs> yeah penguin penguin like penguin penguin, penguin. Mugs. penguins plushies. Uh, not a penguin 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 mugs mugs <laughs> that's kind of wild uh yeah speaking of amazon wish list if you pick up anything i was playing with this in the pre-show we, we got our fine upstanding cannibal mm-hmm. wall back there to try to make it yeah. gently not have seizures but uh if you get anything uh for the studio i will uh read a note jill will do mm-hmm. the same preferably one that you sent because we tried just yes. reading random notes and it confused people <laughs> yes <laughs> like B flat. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. But you said a random note. But we do appreciate <laughs> your support and hop into our Discord. Uh, we do have a Discord where this conversation takes place the other six days of the week. And of course, if you're in live, um, everything's linked together with our little bot that keeps our IRC, all, all that stuff's over at Linux Gamecast. Click on the live tab. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Fun times. Check out interfacinglinux.com. I want to thank everybody who subscribed. Past mm-hmm. couple of weeks, we're almost at a thousand subscribers, and I want to hand out a couple of participation trophies because I saw a couple of you did put the effort and initiative into subscribing to Interfacing Linux, <laughs> but you subscribed to Linux Gamecast. <laughs> I'm like so close, you didn't quite uh, get there. Yeah, <laughs> but go check that out. That's uh, Bob. Uh, you know, it's been a side project for a long time. It's still kind of a side project, but uh, I'm I'm on a little bit of a mission to um, get serious about uh, getting the tools and information together for content creators, producers, people looking to make stuff under Linux and have it all in one place with everything you need. And we're talking audio, video, ginormous heat sinks, whatever we can come up with mm-hmm. is there. Interfacinglinux.com. And uh, yeah. That's cool. There we go. Too uh, late. I want right. to do a, a quick shout out to Turbo Tree Sloth for up, up, upgrading his pledge to $6.66. <laughs> there we go. Happy birthday, Turbo. And happy birthday, Turbo. I wished him happy birthday in chat. So I wanted to wish him happy birthday on the show. We love you, Turbo. And thank you to our producers, our executive producers, our Chicago Kicks uh People level of producers. <laughs> they're not producers, but they're Chicago Kicks people. Uh, our Death Notes. These are all the, the different levels that you can s- subscribe to on Patreon. And to our chairlings, there is lots of you. <laughs> lots and lots of you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Beautiful people. Thanks for showing up. Hang it out. Mm-hmm. Have a great rest of your week. Try to get up to something um, penguin flavored. If not, you know what? Go install Ubuntu. Get back to us. Let yes. us know if you see any mysterious puzzle bowls floating around. You're like, ah, yeah. ah, and you'll wake up thinking about it, and then you'll be trapped in a maze with a minotaur full of uh, snaps. It'll be terrifying. Yeah. See you next <laughs> week, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Love you all. <laughs>